welcome to Soul Symbols. My name is Shelly. I'm a writer, an astrologer, and a card reader, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Uh, happy Monday, actually. Um, this is the last weekly energy card reading that I'll be posting on my channel. Um, so I, this is kind of like the, the last episode. Um, I do not host personal readings, so unfortunately there's no way to apply for services. I started this channel about two and a half years ago as an outlet um, with world events. I just wanted a place to kind of practice in a public forum and it's been a very wonderful experience. I have over 300 subscribers and I am grateful for every single one of you. You have let me channel into your energy every week and it's been a wonderful experience. I am very grateful. I always wanted this channel to grow org organically. I never wanted it to be really big, but I'm just, I've, I've learned so much. I've learned so much about how to film videos, how to edit videos, how to read cards for other people, and also, you know, just how to read the cards in, in and of themselves. So it's been a wonderful journey. And um, here on my channel, I will still be posting videos in the future. It's just it's not going to be weekly. It might be once a month or honestly when I have time to or when I feel like it. It, it will probably be more like specialized videos um, with themes to it. And um, But of course, all of my content will still be available if you want to look at the How to Tarot or if you want to visit any of the previous weekly energy card readings, they will still be here for you to access. So again, I do want to just thank everyone for following my channel and... Um, and as we move forward, you know, there are many, many wonderful readers here on YouTube. So it is a, it's a fantastic community. Um, for myself, I watch other, you know, I watch other readers all the time. And um, it is very, it's very kind of you to like, comment, and subscribe for, you know, the, a person's video. When you like the video, it puts it into an algorithm. And I can't tell you just how much me personally, when I'm looking for, like when, when I really need a message to reach me, it's amazing how the video that, that pops up first in the YouTube, YouTube algorithm is exactly what I need to hear. And that comes, that, that comes about from you liking a video or you, um, you know, turning on notifications or, or subscribing to a channel that you really like. It puts it into, I feel like, a kind of universal um, cue that where it really does the messages reach the people that they need to. So I do think that there's kind of an energy to that. But as the final reading, I wanted to go ahead and pull out three of my favorite decks. So as this being the, the finale here, um, the first deck we have is the, um, I'm sorry, the Rider Waite Smith. It is the A.G. Mueller. And on top of it, we have a beautiful Sunstone. This is the deck that I used for all of my How to Tarot videos. Uh, the second deck is the Morgan Greer Tarot, uh, produced by U.S. Games. And this is the my second ever deck that I've purchased, but it was the first deck I formally learned tarot on. And it's also a deck that I, I, I discovered with a tarot reader, like an in-person tarot reader who read for me. So this is a very special deck to me. And on top of it, we have a beautiful piece of sea glass. The third deck is the Jane Austen Tarot, and gosh, this is such a gorgeous deck. Um, it is a vintage deck. It is no longer in print, but it is Jane Austen, and I am an English major, and it's it's just it it always gives me really powerful messages, and it's 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 a deck I will never part with. <laughs> and on top of it, we have a beautiful double pearl. Uh, to clarify the reading today, we have the um, a new deck. Um, it is the Star Seed Oracle. And this is more of um, this is more of like a, kind of like your, a connection to the universe kind of messages. It's not quite it's not angel messages, but it kind of feels like that. It it feels like long term, and um, I just thought that that was very. It's not only my newest deck, Oracle deck, but it's also a very. Um, higher power kind of uh, message and I thought since we since we are leaving off on the first of the year January 1st 2022 and it is the last video I wanted to go ahead and and do something special and on top of it we have a beautiful opalite dragonfly 
But all right, guys, it, again, as always, it does not need to be the week of December 25th through January 1st, uh, 2022, in order for the messages to resonate. If you come across this reading at any time, there might be messages contained. I ask that you please choose from your intuition. If you need more time, please pause the video, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, guys, we're back. Oh my gosh, that's so surreal. I'm sorry, this is going to be a very bittersweet kind of read for me, guys. I mean, I'm not going away, but I'm, I won't be doing these reads anymore, so it's it feels like, you know, I just wanted to give everyone a heads up that I, that it was coming to an end. You know, I've, I, I love and respect all readers, but sometimes they just, um, you know, some readers sometimes just stop doing readings and they don't, they don't give any notice, and I know it's been a tough year. I'm not judging anyone for that because it's been a tough year we don't you know emergencies happen but um i did want it to just be very clear Ooh, we've got the king of cups flipping around i'm gonna flip him back in just because i think i think that's a message from my my energy there all right so deck number one what's your energy for the week these two go side by side <clears throat> excuse me my third chakra is closing up okay middle of the week Oh, goodness. My goodness. End of the week, please. Deck number one. What's the end of the week energy, please? Oh, gosh, guys. We definitely have some higher energy here. We have a lot of broader themes in the Tower and the Three of Pentacles. Um, I definitely feel like there's some changes going along for you. Yeah, gosh, guys. Okay, um, Seven of Swords, who's that? Okay. Mm. Alright, let's go ahead and get your Starseed Oracle card. Deck number one, what's the energy for the week? Um, I'm drawn to both these cards, so I'm just going to take both of them. Alright, guys. So beginning of the week, this is really interesting, guys, is that um, I am getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of a closing of a cycle um, with the with the world. The four corners of the world are the um, the four astrological signs, the four fixed ast astrological signs. So here you have the water bearer, which is Aquarius. Here you have the eagle, which is um, is the um, the enlightened version of Scorpio. It's like the the positive um, um, evolved version of Scorpio. Then you got Leo, which is the lion, and then you got Taurus, which is the bull. I and next to the nine of, of wands, I think you're really you're you you are ready for your new year. I, I get the feeling like at the beginning of this week, you're already thinking about you're already thinking about Saturday, like okay, you're you're ready to finish out this year. You're ready to say bye bye 2021. You're like, okay, peace out, have a good life, bye bye. <laughs> and um, I think you're. Um, you know how when you come out of, um, after you come out of the holiday, and it, whatever holiday you celebrate, doesn't have to be Christmas, if it's Yule, if it's Hanukkah, if it's Kwanzaa, whatever, um, however you celebrate this last weekend, it um, usually leaves us, um, I mean, you get, sometimes you get gift cards, sometimes you get gifts and stuff like that where you have money, but a lot of times you're spending money on other people, right? So it just kind of feels, it kind of feels like a page of pentacles kind of situation where you're, you're starting off, you're thinking, okay, I'm, it's been a rough year. I'm ready for this year to be over. You know, you might, you might even be thinking about how I'm getting a lot of new year's resolutions from this guys. Like, like, like you've got plans, <laughs> you've got plans, but it's almost like you have to get through this final week and in order to close everything out. Now, one other thing that I'm kind of seeing here is that if you are a parent, this might involve a little one, um, maybe a little earth sign uh, child, or uh, just a, a child who's very practical, like um, a child who's very, um, you, you might know this child because they might be very book smart or um, very, just very practical. You know, it's funny, when my little niece was baby baby, um, 
she had um, she had those little toys like the little people like the little their little plastic toys and she used to um, she used to organize her toys even though she was like a toddler you know like a year and a half old she she had a system to things and that's what I'm kind of getting is that you would kind of know if, if this pertains to a child you would know who that child is because they're they they have systems like the way that they the way that they even even the way they play is kind of in a practical organized way I know that sounds funny but if this is just your energy I see that you're just you're 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 ready it's been a long year and you're you're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and you're excited you it's almost like you're getting ready for I'm getting a lot of New Year's resolutions um, the other thing I get is I get that you might be like starting some plans you might not have a whole lot of money but you're you're like you're getting a plan as to a budget you're getting a plan as to the things you want to do the other thing I get is that it, this is really positive energy guys because I also think that you're just you don't have a lot of energy you might be kind of worn out but you're you're I get this as like you breaking things down into manageable pieces like you're breaking this into little steps like okay if I need to like like be, before I even started filming this video I was thinking okay I need to you know after the holidays that's another thing that happens after the holidays is sometimes you 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 know you do the great purge right you you look at it you're like okay I got all this stuff from the holidays there might be some old stuff that I either need to donate or I need to go through or I just don't feel like I have enough space and before I even sat down to do this video I was kind of doing that in my closet I'm like oh my gosh I need to I need to reorganize this I need to I want you know I, I've if you follow my channel I, I like to listen to records and I've inherited a lot of family records and I want like a space where my records are in one place so I am gonna be doing some rearranging and that's gonna feel kinda good you know again like the great purge it's gonna feel kinda good but I do have to do it in phases right you know I have to I can't just you know do the little um, you know uh, Tasmanian devil whirlwind it's not all gonna happen in one day I have to almost like move some things out go through things donate things you know maybe sell some things that's what I'm kind of seeing here guys and it's almost like but I do get the feeling like it's just been I, I feel like while you're doing that while you're making little steps forward you're also you don't have a whole lot of energy because you might be working or you know the, the after you might still just be kind of exhausted from Christmas you know or the, the, the holiday that just passed you might it might feel a little chaotic um, but you're you're holding your own <laughs> that's what I'm kind of getting you're holding your own now by the middle of the week this is interesting guys is we've got temperance and we got the devil now one we've got quite a few big majors here guys everything every stage of your week has a major and I've said it before in other videos majors do not mean that you know majors are not like an asteroid is gonna come out of the sky in the middle of your week and make it miserable no majors I, I like to think like the I like to think of it like the gears of a clock like like Big Ben in London you know that's a big clock and there are big big gears that turn the medium sized gears that turn the smaller gears which make the the time go that's what majors do in the tarot there are bigger events in your life occurring that are turning the smaller gears you know the the bigger gears of, of decades turn the smaller gears of years and months and weeks and days and hours which are, are bigger so you've got bigger themes in your life that are really touching you you're feeling the bigger themes of what's going on in your life this week but I definitely think the, the world is the last of the majors so by the middle of the week I do think that you're just balancing you're balancing the other thing I kind of get is that maybe in the middle of the week, I, I can kind of read this two ways. You might be balancing some addictions and not to say it like that. I don't think I don't think this is anything crazy, but, you know, addictions can be anything. Maybe maybe. Um, and again, we just came out of the holiday season as you're cleaning up or making room for things. Maybe you're like, oh, God, you know, I I bought three, you know, Christmas trees last year 
or, or, I, or I have three Christmas trees, why do I keep buying another one? You know, you might be kind of looking squarely at yourself, you know, as to your habits. And you might be identifying some habits in the middle of the week. You might be ad identifying some habits that are not all that good. That might be keeping you in kind of a negative cycle. The other thing is that I think that they, these habits are either costing you time or energy or money. And, you know, and it's amazing stuff really does that. You know, they, they talk in, in Buddhism, and I think it's a Zen principle as well. When you have possessions, possessions require maintenance and they take up space, right? In, um, in feng shui, they talk about that. You know, when something is taking up space and collecting dust, you know, you have to dust it. it it's taking up space. Do you really use it? right that's i'm really getting kind of like i get a sense like you're you're balancing out like okay you know do do i really need these things why do i keep buying these things the other thing is that i think you might be like paying attention to what it is that you spend your money on or how you spend your time or what's taking up your time um because the devil really is about you know it's about being chained to something right it's about being bound to something and I feel like um, you're kind of, you're balancing that out. Like you see in temperance, she has one foot in water and one foot on earth. So earth is practicality and water is emotions or, or feelings or, you know, earth is also what you value, right? So I do also, I do also think that you're getting enlightened. Like you're, you're looking at this from a higher perspective. The other thing is, as you go into the new year, it is, I'm, I'm getting a strong feeling of like New Year's resolutions here, guys, like, like things you want to do differently. Now, one thing I did see is that the Seven of Swords did want to pop up and we do have an emperor here. So one other thing I can read this is that you might be dealing with someone that you are kind of bound to, you know, again, if this involves a child or if this involves like you you might be dealing with someone who like you you might be closing out a cycle with someone and it's been a really long road like this person i'm getting like a drained energy right but i feel like you might be you might be making changes for the benefit of a child either that or if there's no child involved you're just you're you're making slow you're you're almost like with the innocence of a child you're making plans for yourself and by the middle of the week, I think, again, by the middle of the week, you're, you're balancing it. You're not out of the woods yet. You might, you might owe someone money or you might be in a situation that you can't leave right away. Like you can't just up and leave. Um, and you might feel a little bit bound. It might feel a little burdensome, like, like you're trapped. But you're, you're trying to balance those emotions. You're trying not to feel overwhelmed with it. And you, you, the other thing is you see the sun in the distance. You know, it's rising over mountains. And you see how there's a path through the mountains. Mountains in Lenormand mean challenge. Uh, the, the symb symbolically, mountains mean challenge. And there's a path through, right? And there's a rising sun right? The other thing is temperance is an angel. And here you got the devil and you got an angel, right? So there's a, there is a way through. And, and you do, you just got to kind of keep your hope high, you know, just don't, don't be unrealistic with it. I don't think you are because this is a page energy. You know, you're not being unrealistic. You're just, you're going to break it down into manageable pieces until, you know, one step at a time. One thing I love about New Year's is that um, I, I always do, I do a list of resolutions, but I do always, um, sometimes that list of resolutions includes practical things like, okay, I'm going to pay off this credit card or, you know, even if you can't completely pay it off. Um, what you can do is you can put the highest payments towards the uh, towards the obligations that have the highest interest and then do the minimum payments for everything else until that first big card is paid off and then you can do then you do the same thing with the next card the next the next obligation that has the next highest interest you put the highest payment towards that and minimum payments towards everything else until that second you know obligation is gone so this is ways of breaking it down. You're getting a plan, right? And I do, sometimes I like to do that in my resolutions list is even if I can't completely pay something off, I, I say, okay, by June, I'm going to have $500 paid down on this, right? Or I'm going to make sure that this, this is, this credit line is reduced by that, 
by that time. So, or, you know, you can say, okay, by June, I'm gonna make sure that I've, I've done ABC maintenance on my car. Or I'm gonna, every payday, I'm gonna transfer X amount of dollars to a savings account that I can't touch in order to repair my car or to save for a house or whatever your goals are. So I feel like you're doing that and you're, you're, you're balancing it. You're saying, okay, I can't, you know, and this is by the middle of the week. I can't, I can't just get out of this overnight, but I can get a plan and I'm balancing it. I'm not gonna let it overwhelm me. I'm not gonna make it feel like I'm trapped. I'm just gonna keep on going right but if this involves another person you might be balancing the waters a little bit you might have to you might have to um placate a little bit um you might have to talk to someone even though it, you might have someone who's being a little bit you might have someone who's being a little drama rama um we did have the seven of swords come out and yeah you got the eight of wands yeah, I do get the feeling like you might you might have some kind of motion going on with something. You might be closing out the cycle with someone and but you're still obligated. It's not like this person is can just you can just cut off this person. You're going to have to still talk to them. But I do get the feeling like you're being patient with them and you're speaking to them, but you're not letting them get under your skin and you're not letting the situation overwhelm you, which is really mature energy pile one. By the end of the week, this is really beautiful. You got the hanged man. And that is, you look at look at the number of majors that you have that have a halo of light. This is talking about enlightenment, guys. It's like you you see what's you're you're not you know how they talk, you know how when you look like if you go on Google Maps, you can zoom in and see like a building. But then you can zoom out and see, you know, the bigger picture right? I'm really getting that you see the bigger picture. I think that you are present if you're dealing with someone and or a situation that is uncomfortable. And that's the thing about the hanged man is that the hanged man is in an uncomfortable situation, but he sees the purpose of it. He sees the purpose of being uncomfortable. And I try not to cuss on my channel. It's over 18, but I was kind of, I do kind of call this the sitting in the shit card, but it's not a bad it's a, not a bad energy. He can lean up and untie himself at any moment. But by him being in that uncomfortable pos position, he can see he can see something from a higher perspective. And that's what I'm kind of getting by the end of the week. By the end of the week and into the new year, you might have some petty conflict going on. This might be family related. We did see the emperor who is this five? Okay, Ace of Cups. Now, I kind of read this one of two ways. The Ace of Cups can be like self-love. Yeah. You're going to be real tired, guys. You're going to be doing more than your lion's share. But uh, I am, oh gosh, I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing the Queen of Wands and the King of Swords. You might have to deal with someone Yeah, again, guys, I, I'm seeing a lot. There's so many wands. You've got both the nine and the ten of wands. You're working really hard. You might be dealing. When I see the, the queen of wands, even though it's upright, that can be a kind of a dramatic person. It can be a little bit of a, it can be a little bit of a high maintenance person. Um, I do get the feeling like maybe you might be communicating like a lot. Like you might have to you might you might have like a, a little bit of a conflict or drama going on by the end of the week but i do feel like you're working really hard you're probably you're gonna have some long days this week guys but it is it is saying by the end of the week and especially over the new year um, you are going to take some time. It's almost like you're working hard to give yourself self-love. I almost see this combination. You know, um, it was funny. When, when I was going to school, when I was going to college, I paid my way through school. And I was working full time. And it was so funny. It wasn't funny. It was hard as hell. Um, you know, I'd get up at 6 a.m. I wouldn't go bed to the bed until 11 p.m. And I packed all three lunches and I did homework when I could. And, you know, I, I really didn't have any fun time. That's what I kind of felt like. I never had any fun time. It was all just, you know, it was all planned out. It was all worked. And it was a lot of, it was a lot of work. But there were moments where I was like, okay, even though, you know, when I'm at work, I'm at work. But when I'm at home, 
and not doing school work, that's me time. And everything that I'm doing, all this work, you know, like, I call it the second shift, right? You know, it was, it was, it was like working two jobs. Maybe you might even be working two jobs. But it's like, maybe the other thing I kind of see there is that maybe you do, you, you are getting, you're really toughening up to do this. I, I see you, you know what, I, I almost get this feeling like you might have like a lot of conflict either in a home situation or a work situation, but you have someone there, you have someone there, and I feel like you're the king of swords, and I think you have like a queen of wands, and this, you assign the genders as they resonate, yeah, you got someone who's like a mirror of you, someone that feels like home to you, someone who's a comfort to you. Um, yeah, this is the second time, the King of Swords, you know? You might be dealing, you might be dealing with someone who has kind of money, like a woman who has money. Things might be moving really, really quick, but... I, I do get the sense like this this combination swords and pentacles there's no sentimentality in that it's it's all for practical reasons it's either okay we're communicating about money or I'm talking to you because we need to pay this or you know there's not a whole lot of like heart in that but by the end of the week you are going to be taking care of yourself and i do think that you're going to be talking to someone that feels like a, a parallel to you feels like um you know now just for a select few of you this might involve some kind of wedding nah yeah with the the six of pentacles i do feel like this is like money that might be owed to you that you might have to communicate about you might be a little you might have to be a little bit hard ass about it um and by the end of the week, you're just, you know, I, I'm getting kind of separate energies here, guys. There might be some kind of family or home situation that you're obligated to. There might be a situation where someone owes you money and you really need them. You need them to, like, to, to, to make this level, you know, to, to, to pay, you know, to, to pay what's due to you. And I think that's coming quick. You might get news that it's coming fast, faster than you anticipate. But by the end of the week, I don't think you're going to have this money by the end of the week. But I, I think you might be working really hard at work. You might have a lot of, you know, um, I'm getting kind of dueling personalities. You might just be dealing with a little bit of drama at work. And again, just like, you know, just like those long days, you get home and you just, you got to have a little bit. It's almost like you, you feel like you have no energy left for self-care. But you might have someone who's like an old friend. Who really, who really understands you? They like the uh, the other thing I get is someone might be mirroring you. You know what I'm almost getting is that over the weekend someone might contact you because they feel you. I know that sounds funny, but you know sometimes when I'm stressed out and crazy, you know, like my best friend will call me and be like, "I was just thinking about you. Are you okay?" <laughs> um, that's what I'm kind of getting by the end of the week. Now, let's go ahead and, 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 oh, this is beautiful. It says, you you got the love, which really talks about that at the end of the week. And you're not alone. Oh, gosh, guys. Let me go ahead and read these two. So you, you got the love. Okay, you got the love. They're one after, actually, they're one after the other in the in the deck. I shuffled this deck, but um, it says the... The Hedarians are believed to be beacons of pure, divine, unconditional love who see love in all people and situations. As a result, they can find it hard to have boundaried, independent, boundaried, independent healthy relationships because they only see the unconditional nature of those they meet. The lovers of the cosmos, they, they dive in fast. They're here to learn how to love while in a separate body. To learn to love first, um, to learn to love self first, then establish healthy relationships with others, to remember that the love you seek is already within them. They truly do have all the love on their own. 
Yeah, and I do. I saw that, right? We saw that with the Ace of Cups, right? Like, it's 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 okay. You know, the other thing is I get, guys, you're a real giver. Like, maybe at work or with your family, if someone's having a problem, you drop everything you're doing to go help them, but that really overwhelms you, right? You're, you're going to give until you deplete yourself, and that's not, that's not healthy. Um, you know, it's okay to give unconditional love, but make sure your well is for, uh, filled first. Um, and then here you got um, the older the soul, the deeper the cave. Many star seeds and old souls enjoy their own company. Spending time alone can be comforting and necessary for their vitality, as it allows them to commune with their soul and fill up their energetic resources, especially if they have been have been underactive or open um, or open root chakra or find it hard to be human. Oh gosh, guys, I think. I think you've been you, you you've I think you've been working a whole lot guys and I think I do think by the end of the week someone's going to connect with you but I don't think this person's overwhelming and but I do think that it's it's I I do think that something's really really busy you've got a lot of wands here you've got a lot of activity around you pile one but by the end of the week, I think you are going to be connecting to someone that you know from the past who is almost kind of feeling you. You know, I, I do. I get. I see this as the mirror card. Like someone might be calling and saying, hey, are you okay? I've, I've been feeling you, right? The other thing I get is that I do think that you, you are not alone. There are other people there to support you and not take from your energy. And um, just remember that, you know, you don't have to um, give of yourself when your well is dry. You know, it is okay for you to be by yourself and to just kind of recharge your batteries. Um, the other thing is that you really, I think you're going to be learning a lot about how to be comfortable with yourself before connecting to other people. Because that's important. There's a balance in relationships. You always have to take care of your own needs first. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get into deck number two, the Morgan Greer Tarot. So what's the beginning of your week? Oh, my goodness. Common denominator is the Queen of Wands, I think. Okay, please clarify. Okay. Okay, uh, middle of the week. Please clarify. End of the week, please. Okay, this is flipping out. Oh, my goodness. Okay, please clarify. One more. Ooh. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get your star seed card. Ooh. Oh, that flipped right out. Weight of the world. Okay. All right, guys. So beginning of the week, I think you're going to have a very dynamic beginning of the week. you got the Queen of Rods. Uh, first off, I really think that you're going to be feeling comfortable in your own skin. You're going to be feeling very confident. Um, I, I'm getting a strong sense that maybe this is from the clothes that you're wearing. Like, even, even if you are... I'm getting a feeling like even if people don't see you, you know, even if you're working remotely or you're not in the public eye that you're dressing well or you just you like you you feel kind of movie star you've got that little je ne sais quoi you know you got that little something something you know <laughs> in the beginning of the week and i think maybe maybe you're doing your makeup the other thing is i get maybe you're wearing some jewelry that makes you feel pretty um probably gold because the queen of rods really does that so maybe you're just you know again you're you're dressing up or you just feel confident um, the other thing I get is that I just think that you're you're being um, I do think that you're being a, like a strong leader. The other thing I kind of get is that you're you're doing things your way in the beginning of the week, and I don't think you know it isn't that it isn't that you're not willing to cooperate with others, but I just see you being kind of like a dynamic leader where you're doing things your way because you know it works. And, um, and again, you know, just like the King of Wands, you know, doesn't, you know, he, he, he goes, you know, he goes, he does things the way he wants to do them. Um, the Queen of Wands does it the same way. Um, something about that sunflower really just speaks of radi radiating, you know, like, like, you know, not, not really, you know, 
not really caring if if someone gives you pushback i don't think that you're going to be a tyrant or anything like that i don't think you're going to steamroll anyone but i do see that it's it's almost like you know again you just you radiate confidence you radiate leadership and you know the other thing i get is that people want to follow you because of that confidence and that's really what i'm feeling in the beginning of the week the other thing i get is that here underneath it we got the page of cups and here we've got like we've got like the three of pentacles and the two of cups so i really think that at the beginning of the week you're going to get some kind of message of love it's going to be some kind of um, small uh, but it's going to be very heartfelt whenever it's a page of cups you know pages can definitely be messengers but it's going to be something little and sentimental but it's going to be something so sincere that's the thing about the page of cups is that you know when you see the two of cups that's a beautiful card because two people are connecting two people are you know are you know they're feeling each other i understand how you feel and you understand and, and it's almost like you're sharing emotions right but when when the page of cups is involved it's almost like it's it's so from the heart it's almost childlike it's so innocent and open i'm just getting really open heart open heart and what i'm kind of getting is that i get that this message this communication might be um might be over something simple like i i think you're going to connect with someone like maybe someone maybe your your boyfriend or girlfriend or your lovey calls you and says hey can you can you pick this up from the grocery store for me and while you're on the phone with them or while you're texting some kind of really sentimental exchange is going to occur like someone might say something like you know have i told you i loved you today or the other thing i get is with this queen of rods maybe someone says wow you look gorgeous you know um you know or i'm, I'm getting like someone's going to be kind of speaking your love language and the way that that occurs is through what started as like a um just a routine communication but it it ends up being a real connection real connection you might have someone tell me tell you like oh gosh you look gorgeous or dang you know you're beautiful you know and but i i do i i get like it's almost like an innocent kind of you know but that them coming out and being so open really connects you really connects you and that's something to look for in the beginning of the week by the middle of the week this is amazing guys is that um you know one other way I can kind of read this is that if this is more, you know, not romantic, this could just be work related where someone really praises you or, or says, you know, thank you so much for doing that. You are amazing. I really get the sense like someone you're going to connect with someone over a compliment and it's going to make you feel feel good. It's going to make you feel really, you know, really beautiful like the Queen of Rods. Now, by the middle of the week, this is beautiful. This is kind of playing into this energy, guys, is that this possibly might be, you know, by the middle of the week, it looks like you're, again, these are two kind of leadership cards. Like the Three of Wands, if you watch my How to Tarot on the Three of Wands, um, Three of Wands really does talk about, like, leading by example. Um, and it's, it's really leading by example into kind of unknown territory. So you might be doing that. You might, you might be, the other thing is you might be taking action with something um, that is, is, is paving the way or setting the, 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 the structure for how to do whatever it is that you're doing into the future. Um, the other thing is that the Ace of Pentacles can really be um, a cornerstone right? So the other thing I get from this is whatever you're doing is getting the attention where you you might be um, your work, you know, um, you taking initiative might be guaranteeing you some kind of financial and um, security into the future. Like you might have people noticing that you're, you're stepping up and, and doing, you know, you're, you're, you're going and you're thinking about the future and you're taking actions. You might be creating, if, if this is work related, you might be creating policies or something. Um, if this is family related, I'm, I'm really getting more work related. 
Um, if you're an entrepreneur, you're looking to the future and you're um, you're you're laying the foundation. Um, you're getting the the cornerstones in place of of you're really the other thing I get is you're kind of excited again you're leading by example you're tr really trailblazing by the middle of the week but I get the feeling like the actions that you're taking now are going to guarantee you some kind of like incentive in the future so if you're a business owner you know whatever you're doing in the middle of the week you're you're not only leading others but you're also you're you're paving the way for good results. Um, but I do get the sense like you're 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 leading by example, and this is gonna this is almost gonna either get the attention of higher ups or this is gonna guarantee you some kind of income in the future, you know. Um, by the end of the week, you've got more of this gorgeous sun energy. You've got so many sunflowers here, guys. I'm telling you, like you're really you really might having might be having a glow up this week. Um, by the end of the week, I do feel like. You're gonna, you've got the High Priestess and you've got the Queen of Cups and the Sun. Now, one way I can read it, I, I do just want to clarify the Queen of Cups is this pile. Ace of Cups. Oh my goodness. Ace of Cups came out in the first deck. Um, you might have some cross watchers here. Um, I do just think that. You're gonna have a moment of just sunshine. Look at even the even the Ace of Cups in this has a ball of light coming out of the cup, and you've got a ball of light here. You've got like five sunflowers. You're gonna be like I'm, I'm hearing that song, "Walking on the Sunshine." Um, by the end of the week, guys, you're okay. Something's gonna happen at the end of the week that is gonna bring you sunshine. The other thing is you got another two people staring at each other. This might be romantic. By the end of the week, you might have someone really, you might have someone bring you an Ace of Cups by the end of the week. Um, either that or whatever, if this is like, if you're doing some kind of project that makes you really happy, you might just feel really emotionally fulfilled by the end of the week. Um, you know, you're just, again, walking on the sunshine, you're going to be feeling like something is going to make you seriously j jumping over the moon happy by the end of the week. But the funny thing is, is that the universe isn't telling me what it is. It's almost like it's a secret. It's a secret. It, 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 it doesn't want, yeah, <laughs> you got the four of swords it just all it wants you to do is it doesn't the the universe doesn't want you to worry about just know that you're going to be happy it's going to make you feel like emotionally all, all that good you're going to feel emotionally elated by the end of the week guys and i can't tell you if this is work related i'm really getting the feeling it might be relationship related yeah, just, it. you know what, strength and the four swords almost kind of tells me, like, hold back your curiosity, tame your curiosity. And that's another Leo card. That's another Leo card. You know, the other thing about the Queen of Cups that I kind of get in this spread is just to be receptive. Be receptive, just receive this. You've got the universe, because the other thing is that the universe, these are hands popping out of clouds. you got two aces, guys. You got hands popping out of clouds, giving you emotional fulfillment and financial stability. And wow, guys, I really think you're having a gorgeous week. The other thing is just receive it. Just receive it. The other thing I get is don't try to control how it comes to you. Just enjoy it when it does. I mean, definitely when, when it's given to you, react. It's not telling you how to react. If you want to, you know, jump up and down, if you want to do the Snoopy happy dance, you do that. <laughs> you do that. But all it, but it is telling you, I, I do kind of get the feeling like, you know, um, you might get some words that some, some new beginnings are coming this week, guys. And again, this is the last week of the year. So maybe this is a kind of an indicator that something is coming by the new year. But by the end of the week, I am getting like a, I'm getting like a love. Okay. <laughs> I got the king of, I got the knight of pentacles. It's basically telling you just wait. <laughs> don't don't rush it just know that something happy something really nice is going to happen to you and be receptive be happy but it's it's going to make you feeling like jump over the moon excited like emotionally elated 
is what I'm getting. Now, you, you here you got weight of the world. And this is interesting. You kind of see a woman who's in water, which is kind of like the Queen of Cups. But boundaries, let it go. It's not yours to carry. Okay, you don't need to carry it all. You're, it's, you're no good to anyone if you're running on empty and bogged down with the weight of the world. This card is a reminder to look after your own well-being before anyone else's, to stop carrying the world's problems on your shoulders, to put your own oxygen mask on first. In these changing times, it's hard not to feel overwhelmed by the state of the planet. However, you can't take on its problems from a place of energetic depletion. This card is thanking you for caring so much. You want to build a better world and ease the road for others, and that's incredible. But the way that you've been doing it is 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 um, likely unsustainable. This isn't to say that you should switch off the world's problems and become unconscious. Rather, it's a call to establish clear, brown, clear boundaries so you're not constantly taken out energetically. The planet needs you to be healthy, both physically and emotionally. So, you know what, guys? It's possible this this might not involve the end of the week might just be you doing things that make you happy. The Ace of Cups is definitely a self-fulfillment card. This kind of energy came out in pile one towards the end as well. Like don't don't take on the world's problems, just do you. But um, but I am getting like uh, again I'm I'm getting like something is going to make you really happy. But the 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 key to that is to not not try to control it just let it come to you let the universe do its thing but i am seeing that you're going to be like something is going to make you super happy and it's going to be emotionally happy the other thing i get is that you're going to feel real emotionally grounded just really again just i, I am i'm hearing that song walking on the sunshine all right pile two so that is a that's a really gorgeous week i'm really happy for you all right, so pile number three, we're going to try not to make the pile three go on forever because I can talk, Jane Austen is like my favorite deck. Like I, there's there's so much nuance because the, the cards are, you know, based on the books and the situations in, in the books uh, by Jane Austen. But deck number three, Jane Austen Tarot with the double pearl. What's your energy for the week? So beginning of the week. Ooh. Oh gosh, we got the devil again. Okay, four coins. One last one. Oh gosh, I feel like there's a lot of central energy here, guys. Wow, okay, middle of the week. Okay, please clarify the Lord of Teacups. Okay, that's flipping. Oh my goodness, we got the Fool in reverse. Okay. Uh, end of the week. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, please, one more for. Okay. Okay, we got two sixes. And the hermit. Wow. That's wild, guys. That's really wild. Okay. Um, there's a lot of cross themes here. Okay, your star seed. Again, this is also coming up against the uh, beginning of the year. So, you know, this could be, there's a lot of energy of looking ahead to the next year and being like, okay, you know, this is what we're leaving behind. This is what we're going towards, right? And I see a lot of that with the sixes here. I didn't even know that card was reversed. Oh, your life is a canvas. Oh, that's beautiful, guys. All right, so deck number three. Wow, you got some powerful stuff here, guys. Not going to lie. Not going to sugarcoat it. Beginning of the week, you got the devil. And in this deck, it's Lady Susan. So you see this woman kind of holding a girl by her neck, right? But she's kind of smiling to your face. She's got one guy kind of groveling for her and then another girl looking at her. She's, she's a real character, Lady Susan. But... You might be dealing, um, underneath it, we got the Four of Pentacles, and the Four of Pentacles is a real powerful one. This is the scene in Sense and Sensibility, where the Dashwood sisters, what it is is that um, 
the Dashwood sisters, they were left kind of destitute. They were left very impoverished by their, their half-brother. Their father had married and then had a son, which in those times, male heirs always inherited everything. You know, if you were a female, even if you were born first, the, if the male heir inherited everything. So their father, um, Mr. Dashwood, he passed away, but what had happened was he had had a previous marriage where he had a son and then he was widowed and then he married again much later in life and he had three daughters. But his second wife and the daughters were not entitled to anything when he passed away because they were female. So his son got everything. And what happened was he, he, made the, he made his son promise him that he would take care of the girls on his deathbed. He said, you must take care of your sisters. And his son promised him that, but his wife was particularly manipulative, his son's wife. And she was like, she slowly talks the brother into, you know, taking away more money, more money. So what I'm kind of getting here is I do almost kind of get the devil is that that wife. Um, maybe um, maybe you have some kind of family relation. It could be like a sister-in-law or some kind of, I'm getting by marriage. Some of the kind of situation is, is denying you money that you have the right to have. And um, what I'm kind of getting here is, um, and it's interesting, the, you, underneath it, you got the Eight of Candlesticks, which is the Eight of Wands, and you got the Knight of Coins, which is also from Sense and Sensibility. Um, I get the sense like maybe you're, you, by the beginning of the week, you, there might be some kind of family thing going on. This might be because of marriage. Um, but there's some kind of money that might be owed to you, but might be in limbo or being denied to you that's kind of tied up. And it might be with someone who's a little, being a little bit manipulative. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely a devil in a dress here. I'm getting devil in a dress, and I hate to say that. I, I really don't like calling people out like that. That's really, you know... Um, but, you know, men and women can be manipulative. You know, it doesn't, it's not gender specific, but, you know, you might have someone that's kind of holding up money. But what I'm seeing here is that this, this situation is about to open up. Like this person, because the other thing is in this story, Sense and Sensibility, um, the girls do get their inheritance cut considerably. Um, and the, their, their brother does. He goes back against his word. He does not honor the agreement he promised to their dying father. He, he, he really leaves the girls with nothing to live on. And, um, but the, the girls go on to, you know, have very happy, successful marriages. But that's what I'm almost kind of getting here is that maybe, um, that's what I kind of see because Edward Ferrars was really like a character in this. You might have someone who's trying to advocate for this. If there is some kind of money tied up with some kind of legal agreement, I feel like it's really got you chained. You feel trapped, right? You do. You feel like there's some kind of situation. And in this, in this spread, I really think it's a person that's um, got, got money tied up and is not, not being fair is what I'm kind of getting. But I do think that you feel like things are, movement is happening, but it's just, it's happening really slowly. The other thing I kind of get is that if, if something does break with the situation, if you do end up getting, you know, getting some kind of, and I'm hearing inheritance, um, there's, if there is some kind of inheritance or some kind of money that's owed to you, when it does finally get to you, it's almost like even after it's given to you, you're going to have to go slow or you're going to have to make plans. Um, one other way I can read this is that if this is, if this is like regarding a, and, and someone that you're involved with, you know, it could be a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, um, your love interest might be going some, through something like this and, um, and you're, it's almost like you're there for them, but it's, it's, I'm seeing conflicting energies because what it is is the eight of candlesticks is really fast moving energy. It's like, okay, all systems go, but the knight of coins is slow and steady. And you see how he's standing outside the house. Like he's, he's got obligations. So what I'm also kind of seeing here, guys, is that you might have a situation where money might be tied up and is about to be given to you. Like it's the money is about to get untied up. 
but even after it's all systems go and that might be happening at the beginning of the week you might still have to go slow you might have to make plans because dealing with all of this like even even after it's systems go you have to be careful with who you're dealing with and it's going to be slow and steady right the other thing i get is that maybe you want to go fast like you just, you know, once, once you want, I'm getting a feeling you want the situation to just finally be over. But, um, cause in the story, the, the Knight of Coins, this is Edward Ferrars. If you've ever seen Sense and Sensibility, Edward Ferrars got engaged very young to Lucy Steele. And Lucy Steele was a little bit, she was, she's a little bit of a, a gold digger. Um, not in a bad way. She's not a, t a horrible character. But um, she's not as bad as the Dashwood's brother's, you know, the Dashwood sister's brother's wife. She was a real piece of work. But Lucy Steele, actually, Lucy Steele did kind of kiss up to their family, the, the wife's family, too. She was about, um, you know, she was about the money. Uh, but I do almost get, like, you, you want to do what's right and you want to, you want to sort all this. But even after the money gets, you know, gets released, you're going to be dealing with like a devil situation and you have to go slow or you have to be careful. It's complicated is what I'm hearing. It's complicated. You see how he's holding that his hand? What he's doing is he's, if you've watched, if you've seen Sense and Sensibility, um, I highly suggest the BBC version with Hattie Monahan, I think her name is. Um, but Edward Ferrars, he's touching a ring, and the ring has a lock of Lucy Steele's hair in it. And what that is, is um, uh, that was the way that you kind of, of, of showing love, you know, as you get engaged to someone. It's like a private, having the, the lock of someone's hair. One other thing that was very popular in that era as well is to have a painting of someone's eye. It's called a lover's eye. If you ever if you ever want to Google it, there's there's a few TikTok videos that talk about it. Um, but there's a there was a um story about what is it, Maria Fitzherbert and King George. Um, they got engaged and quietly, um but he was going to be the future king of England, and they, it was kind of like a lost love. You know, they couldn't marry each other, but they sent each other little pins, uh, little brooches that were paintings of their eye. So it's almost like a lover's gaze. It's, it's very, you know, it's kind of goth love stories. If you ever want to look it up, it's pretty cute. You know, that's, there's been a resurgence of that fashion as well. I'll even post the, um, the, the article that talks about it, but... Um, I'm sorry, not to get off on a tangent, but that's almost what I'm kind of seeing there is that, you know, you might have, you might have some kind of situation that you need to sort, but it's getting complicated with family, possibly money. I'm really getting money ties. The other thing I get is that you really, you're eager to make things right, but you're dealing with a devil situation. I'm hearing devil in a dress. It could be an engagement that went wrong. I'm, I'm really seeing a strong theme of like Lucy Steele or like, you know, like disentangling yourself from something, you know, because just the way this guy is looking at Lady Susan, he just seems like, you know, all enthralled, even though she does not look like she has good intentions, right? Um but I just get the sense like you might you might have some complicated and I hate to say that I, I'm not trying to like bad mouth anyone, but I just feel like it's something is complicated. Something's making you feel financially strapped or trapped or denied something that is that is yours by birthright is what I'm kind of feeling. And or by situation, maybe you had some kind of business deal. Um, but you want to be like all systems go. And um, the other thing I kind of get is you do see two people. This this chariot card almost looks like in, in Austin novels, you know, after you get married, you ride off in the carriage and you do see two people. I think maybe there's there's some kind of there's some kind of happy ending that you want to get to. But you're standing outside, you know, you can't you can't rush in and have the happy ending yet. You have to go slow and steady and you have to plan this out. And that's how you feel in the beginning of the week. Now, middle of the week, you got the Lord of Teacups, which is the King of Cups. He is such a loyal, I do think that this is, uh, I think both of these cards are, um, 
oh, Captain Wentworth. Um, but you see, the King of Cups is the most loyal. He's the most emotionally loyal person, king. He, he knows who, who his heart belongs to. Um, I am getting kind of a feeling like you might be, you might be away from someone that you really want to be with. Um, what I'm kind of feeling is by the middle of the week, you might be, I know this sounds funny guys, you might be, um, either going out to dinner or you're going to be with someone that you really want to connect to. I feel like it's like over dinner or some kind of meeting. Um, the other thing is that with these cards, uh, it really talks about formal gatherings. And, um, you know, middle of the week, it's not New Year's uh, yet. But um, I actually feel like you're going to have a real quiet New Year's, real contemplative. You got two of the... Okay, we'll get to that. Sorry, guys. Don't mean to jump ahead. Middle of the week, if you're a woman watching this... You're really you're gonna you're gonna see the person that you want to that you long to be with, but you've got the fool in reverse. Uh, so it's almost like you see this person and it's like and I do feel like it's gonna be some kind of gathering. It if if this is in a modern context, maybe it's on, like on a video chat or um, maybe you actually do see them out in public somewhere, um, possibly at a dinner. Or some kind of formal gathering um, but it's almost like you're you can't you you see this person and you're you know that your heart is with them but you can't make any moves like it would be foolish for you to, to start anything or that you're you're just not able to start anything now I am gonna get just one other card okay please clarify the Lord of Two Cups because this could be your energy or this can be someone you're encountering okay one more please clarify Ooh, five of wands and two of wands. Oh gosh, guys. Okay, this takes it into a whole new direction. Um, I'm kind of seeing like here, I am getting a feeling like maybe there's there's someone that you somehow in the middle of the week, someone is you there might be a male figure in your life who thinks that they they're in love, who thinks you see, I think you see someone making a foolish decision. And, you know, you know, the other thing I kind of get is if, if this is someone that you're really connected to, again, I, I feel like all of these energies are interconnected. I think there's someone who knows where his heart, his heart lies. This might be someone who knows that they love you, but they can't make any moves towards you because it would cause conflict. And they can't, they're, they're, the, the two candlesticks is about making a choice. It's quite possible that you might have someone who loves you a whole lot, who might be coming to you in the middle of the week and kind of telling you, I can't, or, or indicating that they can't make a move because they, they're, they're planning to make a choice. But the moment they make this choice, the moment they choose one, one scenario, it's going to cause conflict. There will be drama. There will be drama. The other way I can kind of read it is that you might see someone, again, I, you might see someone that you see be acting foolishly in love. There's some kind of male figure here who is really like tongue wagging for someone. The other thing is that the fool is Lydia. Lydia Bennett, and she is the most harebrained, not, not to be mean to the Bennett family, but she really is. She's, she's impulsive. She just wants to be married. She, she's, you know, she's not mature. She's not mature. And when you have the fool in reverse, that's the most immature thing. And it is, it's almost like, okay, you see someone who's about to fall for that or go for that. And you know, it's going to be a bad choice. Um, you might, this might be a little bit of conflict in the middle of the week for you, uh, pile three. And I'm sorry, I don't like to throw out news like that. Um, you just, you might see somebody kind of, um, what I'm almost getting is that, um, some kind of scenario, some kind of gathering. And again, it doesn't have to be in person. It could be virtual. Um, you could be playing games with someone. And, and, you know, if you're screenshotting or sharing, someone might be kind of all, you know, those, I'm seeing those heart eyes for someone. And you're just like, oh my God, that's the stupidest thing you could ever do. You know, going for that chick or going for that person, you know, 
the other thing that I kind of get is that um, you, in some kind of group setting or some kind of situation, it might become real apparent that someone cannot uh, show cannot show their emotions. Yeah, we've got the magician and the three of swords. This person, someone might be stuck in kind of a bad situation where if they show their real emotions towards you, it would cause conflict. So they have to choose very carefully. And again, I'm getting back to this Edward Ferrars. Like the other thing I kind of get is that maybe in a public setting, you might be dealing with someone who is in a relationship that they want to get out of but they have to play the role like this person might really I, I am getting like a third party situation here pile three i'm sorry you might your heart if this is you your heart lies with someone else but you kind of have to you have to play up the the game of uh, the the role of loving someone else because to to avoid conflict um but you you do know you 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 know that you're choosing something else the other thing I get is that maybe if this is just family related, you might have to be the level headed. Um, you might have to really keep your emotions like maybe you have some maybe you have a few family dinners that are really going to get a little ugly. Um, maybe people are, you know, again, you know, um, um one other thing I can kind of see is that if this is some kind of family thing, maybe you know where you, you, you're being real emotionally grounded given all that's going on because it's, comp again, I'm hearing it's complicated, but by the middle of the week, it's almost like you have to play along maybe at dinner. Uh, there might be some conflict at dinner. I feel that like emotions are running high. The King of Cups is very good about being the emotional barometer. Like if, if he's at a party, he's considerate about how everyone is feeling. And I do feel like there's tensions high here, but it's almost like he has to, I, I get the feeling like you, you want to tell your family or you want to tell this other person that you're no, that you that you're choosing something else, but you know it's going to cause conflict. It's going to cause, there'll be drama. And so um, one other way I can kind of read, you, you went to dinner with your family and you were going to tell them, hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer going to be a part of this. I'm going my own way. It's almost like you were going to relate to them what your plan was. But then something else occurs. Maybe someone else has a fight at the dinner table and it's like, OK, you're you can't. It's not a good opportunity. It would be foolish for you to come out and say, yeah, this is what I'm doing. The other thing I kind of get is I get the feeling like somebody is insulted or somebody is, is, is again, I, I'm getting some kind of drama by the middle of the week, guys. I feel like you handle it just fine. Um, I feel like you handle it just fine. Yeah, three of, three of teacups. You know what? You might even start singing or you might, I, I feel like you might offer some kind of diversion. <laughs> like you're like, okay, you know, um, you know. Uh, Uncle Fred is fighting with my cousin, you know, let me go, let me, let me turn on some music, right? Or, or you, you are, you're being like the king of cups in that situation. But I feel like it's almost like things are very delicate and you, you have to be careful how you, how you broach subjects and, and you can't, you can't, you can't tell anyone what you want to do yet. But by the end of the week, I feel like you are going to be, like, speaking up. Um, you got two sixes. Um, you got the six of swords, which is about moving on to calmer waters. And you got the six of candlesticks, which is really about victory. And again, you have more running horses. You got more running horses. Um, the six of, of, of uh, candlesticks in this is actually really gorgeous. This was um, in um, Pride and Prejudice. After uh, Charles Bingley, Bingley proposes to Jane Bennett, who's um, Elizabeth's sister, um, Elizabeth gets engaged to Mr. Darcy. So both men are both best friends. So you see the two new, you know, brides to be watching them as they ride away because they've they've proposed and they've been accepted and they're going to get married. You know, Elizabeth and her sister are going to get married to Mr. Darcy and his best friend. So it's going to be, you know, it's going to be happily ever after. It's victory. And, but here with the Six of Swords, I, I get the feeling like this victory might be you finally getting away from all of this trapped energy. Like you're, you're moving slowly. Again, I'm getting like slow and steady reads, leaves, wins the race. Um, but I do get, we're going from the Five of 
uh, there's a lot of candlesticks, a lot of action here. So the other thing I kind of get is you might have some strong personalities involved here, you know. The other thing I get is that one person might be acting kind of foolish in the middle of the week. And it's almost like you kind of have to, you have to deal with them, but you're going to do with that. You're going to deal with them in a very emotionally mature way. Now, so I definitely, by the end of the week, I see you've got three cards about like peace and quiet. So that's really great, guys. After your whole week, you know, I feel like you might be dealing with other people in the middle of the week and there's going to be a little bit of drama-rama. But I do get the feeling like maybe you do very peacefully say your piece. Like, okay, I'm going to do this, um, you know. But by the end of the week, I feel like you're going to feel victorious. And I do also feel like you're very slowly you're very slow and steadily moving towards calmer shores like calmer waters and underneath it you got the hanged man and you got the hermit and both of these have libraries in it guys so maybe you really are going to go to a library or maybe you'll just go into your study maybe you'll just read books i also get that maybe if if you do if reading books is like on the internet, you know, it could be a Kindle, you know, a, 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 a e-reader, or maybe you're just on the internet reading about subjects that you, that you enjoy. But I feel like by the end of the week, it's going to be very peaceful. Like you're going to be, I feel like you're going to be in your own headspace. You're going to be in your own place of peace. And, um, I do feel like you you are going to be taking slow steps towards what what your happiness is, but you, I do get the feeling like your new year is going to be very quiet. It's going to be very introspective. Um, the hanged man is about. Uh, I would highly suggest um, for the, for all three piles. I would highly suggest checking out the how to tarot here on my channel for the hanged man. It is about inaction. Um, it's about um, taking no action. Um, I do feel like you're still, you are not, at, you're not out of the woods yet. Um, you're, this is going to be like a slow, steady progress, but I do almost feel like, um, you're going to be uncomfortable. The situation still, I'm hearing it is what it is. It's still very uncomfortable, but it's almost like you're going into the new year feeling like, you know, this is going to take some time. This, whatever, the, my, these changes are going to take some time but you are making progress you might feel a little uncomfortable but i do feel like you're also going to be um because with with the hermit this is mr bennett as well he likes to go into a study and not be disturbed and you see that in the book his his daughters that's the other thing is oh that's a good you know i never noticed that before his daughters don't disturb him when he's in his study right like if you've seen pride and prejudice mr bennett has a very talkative um kind of antsy you know nerve-wracking kind of wife she talks a lot and she's always complaining about her nerves she's she's a big anxiety ball and then she's got, he's got five daughters right and his daughters are good girls but you know the youngest lydia she's a little you know a little you know she gets into trouble and she doesn't really think things out thoroughly and so when when he even says, you know, when I go into my study, do not disturb me. I'm almost kind of getting the, that it's almost like by the end of the week, if, if this is family or I'm really getting family vibes, um, whatever the situation is, it's like you're going into your study and you're doing your own thing. Maybe maybe you're reading on the Internet. Maybe you're playing video games, whatever it is that that teaches you. It's like you're you're going in and. You know, I, I'm almost even getting that maybe you're reading articles about how to handle, like with the King of Cups being in the middle here, um, maybe you, you are learning about how to handle uh, different personalities, like how, how to handle, okay, my family's crazy, I got, you know, my, you know, one person has a lot of anxiety, another person talks too much, another person's, you know, how do I deal with that? Or um, this also could just be how do I keep myself level? You know, how do I deal with all of this? So, but I do think that you have some kind of victory. You, I feel like you've accomplished something this week that at the end of the week you feel like, okay, that is done, you know. Uh, you know, I'm almost getting, I'm almost getting that you, you communicated something to someone. Like, okay, starting next year, we're doing things differently. 
and and you're being very firm about it. You're I think you're being empathetic about their feelings, but it you are going to do what you're going to do. And then by the end after you've done that, you feel like this sense of you feel like this sense of peace. Like, okay, I feel like you're casting off, right? You're getting in the boat. Like after you've you've said, "Okay, I'm I'm no longer a part of this, you know, th this feels like slow and steady." I think that I think you're going into New Year's Day with a sense of quiet, a sense of peace, a, th a sense of reflection. I don't think you're completely out of the woods with this situation, but I feel like it's a complicated situation and you have made a few steps. I feel like it's like some kind of communication to someone. And I feel like that person understood it too. Like, okay, if this is love related, maybe you've actually communicated to someone, okay, I've got some drama with my family that I need to handle. But once we get this sorted, we will, you know, again, getting in the boat together and going towards calmer waters. But then it's almost like very quiet by the new year. You're going into your study where you, you're going into your place where no one can disturb you, <laughs> where you can be alone with your thoughts. And again, all the craziness is outside your door, you know. And again, with the hangman, the situation is still uncomfortable, but you are enlightened by it. I think the other thing is, as you go through this situation, you're learning, you're, you know, you can't just up and get out of the situation, but you, it's teaching you things, right? It's, it's enlightening you. Now your card, you said, your card says your life is a canvas. And gosh, guys, oh, that's beautiful. It says artist, manifestation, creative accountability. All right, that's really beautiful. So I think all of our cards began with you. Uh, your life is a canvas. Okay, so let's go ahead and read this. So your life is a canvas, Pile 3. You're the artist of your life, and your life is a canvas. Take responsibility for your ability to create. Earth is known as a planet of manifestation. Your, pre your present moment is based on your past thoughts and beliefs. Your current thoughts determine your future. What kind of life do you want to create for the future? What are you being called, at, called to create? Reconnect with your manifest, manifesting power and align, with, align your thoughts, feelings, and actions with the vibration that matches them. It's never too late to start and no experience is required. All you need is an open heart and mind and consistent daily action. Wow, guys, that really kind of plays into it because like with the hermit, it talks about, you know, um, it even said here, it says, um, you know, uh, reflecting on the past, you know, just because you did something in a certain way in the past doesn't mean you have to do it in the future. And, you know, you take take accountability. The other thing I get is, you know, do do things the way that you want to do them. You know, in both of those cards, like Frederick Wentworth in the Six of Swords, he joined the Navy and went to sea for eight years, right? That was his choice. That was his journey. He chose that decision. Um, the Six of Candlesticks, the Six of Wands, you know, um, you know, Charles Bingley cho chose his future with Jane Bennett. He said, okay, this is my wife, you know. Um, Mr. Darcy, his family did not like Elizabeth Bennett. Um, but he said, no, this is this is who I want to marry. That's the choice I chose. So it is almost like, you know, your your life is a canvas. You you do not just because you got entangled or you were, you know, you had this from the past. Again, you know, beginning of the week, you have um, Edward Ferrars. He had made commitments in the past and, and there was drama to get out of it. But um, but things worked out in the end. All you have to do is be true to what you want. But I do think New Year's Day is going to be, you know, again, you're still going to be in an uncomfortable situation, but you're going to have, you're going to have taken a few, I think you're taking some kind of action. And I, I'm, I'm hearing kind of hit and run, and I hate to say it like that, but um, I, I refer to hit and runs like when you go up to someone, you know, if you know someone's going to um, fuss about something that you need to tell them, but you need to tell them it. You go up and you're like, look, I'm doing this. And then you you let them deal with it, right? If they have fallout, they have fallout. You you Then you pull into yourself and you're like, okay, you know, hanged man energy. There's nothing I can do about other people's reactions. 
all I can do is me. My life is a canvas, right? You know, I'm, my choices are mine. And But I do think that uh, by the end of the week, I think you're going to have a peaceful New Year's Day. I think that's well earned where you are just going to go off to where where you think where you can have peace and quiet. And if that's a, some kind of room in your house, um, I am almost, I'm not even getting that much activity. Like if, if you do, you know, if you do activity, I, I feel like you're going to do something very quiet. Like I don't even think that you're going to be online. Um, I think you'll, I almost get the feeling like you'll purposely be offline <laughs> because you want, you just want to be, you want to be peaceful, you know? Um, maybe if, if you, you know, if you do art or if you draw or if you write or if you read, you know, um, that's how I think you're spending your new year. All right, guys. Well, wow. I'm almost, this is very bittersweet for me. I, I almost feel, I almost feel a little sad. It's always a little sad, but you know, every ending is another beginning's end right and i started this channel two and a half years ago and it's evolved so much and i really learned so much and i am so grateful for every single one of you that has liked commented subscribed sent me emails i am so grateful to be tuned into your energy and i am very grateful to be part of the youtube community I would, um, again, I am not going away completely. I will come back and do readings periodically, but it will not be, you know, every week. If you, you are welcome to check out any of the, you know, playlists on my channel. We do still have the How to Tarot here. And I do also highly encourage, please, um, please be a patron of other uh, channels as well. You do not need to buy a reading or anything like that. Just you know, liking and subscribing and turning on the bell notification goes such a long way. And by liking the video, if you genuinely found, you know, something good in that message, by liking it, it really puts it out to other people. And the, it's amazing how even in this digital world, the universe works through that because when, when people are having a rough day and they need to hear a tarot message, the 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 algorithm will put that video first you know and i do i feel like the universe kind of knows but again i thank you so much for joining me today i hope to see you around the the youtube universe <laughs> and i'll catch you in the next video bye